This is a podcast by Wellhouse Church, where personal spiritual growth is fueled through a variety of practices rather than a single prescriptive time of devotion, where we discuss different spiritual practices that help us be more present with God, others, and ourselves. What's going on, everybody? What's going on, Cullen? Not much. I'm doing well. How are you? Doing okay. I'm doing okay. Finished up a couple classes, like actual class meetings tonight. So that's fun. Nice. Always a good thing. Nice. Yeah. Yep, I'm doing well. I have uh, my last final tomorrow, and it's like no sweat because it's open book, open notes. Nice. So done with that, ready to um, just get into a time of rest and reconnection with my family and mm-hmm. uh, focus in on some, some more Waha stuff, so... Well, fun, fun. Yeah, doing doing well. It's oh, awesome. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit sore still. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I get it. Um, I get it. If you listen to yesterday's episode of A Closer Look, we talked a little or bit about Or two days ago, yeah. Yeah, two days ago, sorry. Um, we talked a little bit about the recent golf game that we played, and I'm a bit sore from it. Yeah. But we started a new series last week on the Enneagram. Yeah. Last week's episode was what is the Enneagram, different numbers, um, and so on and so forth. But today, we're actually starting that, and we're talking about the one. Yeah, so last week was just like a big, broad introduction to the Enneagram. Yeah. And uh, this week, we're going to get down and gritty and dig down into the Enneagram. Yeah. Specifically, as you said, the type one. Yeah. Which I think most people call the perfectionist yep. or some people call them the reformer. Yeah. Um, and that's because they have this like innate desire of black and white, right and wrong, want to do good and seek justice and leave the world a better place than I found it. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, some, some famous ones that, um, uh, Morgan gives in in the road back to you are Jerry Seinfeld, Nelson Mandela and Hillary Clinton. Um, and I think that those are some good ones. There are some people like shaking in their boots that they can think that Hillary Clinton is a a one, (laughs) a person who wants to leave the world better than they found it. (laughs) Well, and and that's, that's a good point, right? Because leaving the world better than when you found it, it's very subjective. Well, and that's the deal. It's not, it's me leaving the world that I know yeah. better than I found it, yeah. not me expecting to perform for all these other people right. to make their world better than I found it. We all have an agenda. We all mm-hmm. see the world a certain way, and it's probably different than Joe. Your your specific view of the world is probably different than the way Joe Blow down the street sees it. Oh, it's guaranteed to be different. Um and because of that, the changes that you're going to make, the, the the things that you see that need to change are going to be much, much different yeah. than the next person. Um, and so if you're a one and you're like, oh, yeah, I would do things totally different than Hillary Clinton would do. That's cool. Um, that's your view. Right. Um, and yeah, what matters is that you want to leave the world a better place. Yeah, for Uh, sure. And I think with that, something that comes very prone to ones is they operate at a very high capacity Yeah, because they want to leave the world a better place. They see the world in very black and white issues. They strive to be better. They strive to be right. They strive to be correct. Yeah. Um, they work and operate an extremely high issue. And also because um, because they see the world so black and white, they can tend to be quite critical and judgmental. Yeah. And they tend, they can tend, not always, but they can tend to over-function. Yeah. Um, 
it would not be uncommon to see a one working 70, 80 hours a week, right? I guarantee you if Jerry Seinfeld works 70, 80 hours a week, uh, or at least he did at one time, maybe not now that he's older and kind of basically retired, but I think, well, I think he's doing more like, I think he's more doing like production and direction side of film and, yeah, and yeah. screenwriting and stuff, but he's got this one show that's actually really good. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like Coffee with Celebrities or something. And oh, but that's like yeah, that's not a consistent thing. No. That's like that's like LeBron's The Shop. <laughs> it like it happens when it happens, but like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, which by the way, if you haven't watched that, that, that's good. You should go watch some of those episodes. Those are those are good episodes. Which ones? Jerry's? Or? Jerry's, oh. yeah. Jerry's. LeBron's is also good. I constantly find myself challenged when I watch LeBron's The Shop. Mm. It's like, he just brings people on to talk about different, like, real issues. Yeah. And it's called The Shop because if you've been around African American culture, you know that everything goes down to the barbershop. Yeah. Like, everybody hears about everybody's business at the barbershop. Yeah. Well... Um, after you watch the shop, um, you should go watch Jerry's cause it's going to, it's not going to be as heavy. It's going to be a little bit more lighthearted. And, um, but, um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I don't think LeBron's is super heavy. I mean, they're mm-hmm. lighthearted. They're sitting around, they're getting haircuts, mm-hmm. sitting around, getting haircuts, drinking beer, wine, whatever, and just having a conversation. Mm hmm. Um, and they just bring in famous people to have these conversations. So I don't think it's a big deal. That's quite a bit off track. Let's go yeah, back that, to that the was, one. That's pretty off track. Um, so as I was saying, ones can tend to be overcritical, over and like judgmental. And with that, they can be off putting to a lot of people. Um, they can manifest themselves kind of like an eight, like a confrontational person. Mm-hmm. Um, and they tend to over function. Yeah. And they're in the gut triad. Yeah. Which means they feel things in the very central down to their core. Um, so because of all this, according to the Sacred Enneagram, which is a book we have here, their best spiritual practice of getting out of their norm and finding a place to connect with God best is in stillness. Yeah, just in finding that place where you can be still and rest. Yeah, um, which I will tell you, I'm not a one. I'm a three. But ones, threes, and eights all function at very, very high levels. Um, yes, rest and stillness are super important. Um, there. To some extent, they are requirements. Yeah. I mean, you have to get to that place where you can be still and rest. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and kind of going back to something you said that um, ones have this this idea that they, they function super high levels and um, are, are prone to, to anger and stuff. They... they something else that, that Morgan talks about is that um, why don't people care as much as I do? Like that's a question that one's oh, asked. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Why do I do, do I have to do everything myself? Mm-hmm. Like this attitude of nobody's going to do it the way that I want it done. Right. Yeah. Um, or to the level that I want it done. And that, that leads to their over functioning. Yeah. And, and truth is, I think, I think that can even show up in our spiritual lives. Yeah. I mean, it's not that out of place when you read the narrative, the biblical narrative, to find people over functioning for faith's sake. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think ones are guilty of that as well. Lots of times, ones are the people that you will see, I think, ones are the people that you will see that are overworking or over functioning or over performing in their own faith in order to quote unquote have some carryover for somebody else's faith. Mm-hmm. Um, they they do just have this question like why why are you not working as hard as me like do you not understand that we have to make this world a better place the problem with that and the reason that stillness is so important 
is because it's not solely your job to make the world a better place. Yeah. You serve a God who's at work in order to make the world a better place. And we can't forget that. When we over-function at those levels for our own sake, why do we need God anymore? Yeah. If there's no faith, if there's no reliance on God, and it's just us working, 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 um, maybe we maybe we miss the point there. Mm-hmm. Um, God does call us to act and work. Yeah. Absolutely he calls us to act and work, but he also calls us to rest and be still and let God be God. And I think that's hard for lots of people, right? Um and maybe this is me thinking as a six that functions as an unhealthy three sometimes, but um, it's hard for me to to let go and let God do his thing, mm. right? Um, and so I, I don't know if that's necessarily just true for ones. I think that's true for a lot of people. Well, yeah. Because it, lots of people are control freaks in, in some aspect, right? Well, um, yeah, so, yes, a lot of people are control freaks in a lot of regards, but especially a lot of people in the gut triad or the body triad, which are eights, nines, and ones, um, they kind of live by this phrase, I am what I do. Yeah. Like, they identify with their activity. Yeah. Um, and that, that hits them at, at a very deep level of their core. Which is, which is fine. I mean, God gave you that core. God gave you the desires to do the things that you do. Um, but maybe we should also realize that, um, hey, hey, Enneagram type one, you're more than what you do. Yeah. You're made in the image and likeness of God. And he instilled in you some desires, some things to do. But yet... Maybe you need to also understand that he asks you to rest. Yeah. He asks you to be still. Um, he asks you to move forward in some ways that may make you a little bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, stillness is not easy for people who want to move. Yeah. If you watch our video version of this podcast, I constantly move. Yeah, I do too. Um, it's just we we do a lot, and so to sit down and not do is hard. And I think part of the reason that that is is because a one a one can be categorized as an idealist. Yeah, they want. To see the world through the ideals. Uh, they want the best out of the world. So it's so funny. I just found a quote. Okay. It's perfect. Um, <clears throat> if you're a one, you believe the only way you'll know peace on the inside is if you perfect everything on the outside. It's not true. That tranquility only comes when you surrender your compulsive need for perfection and stop stifling your emotions, particularly your anger. Don't hide your true self behind that veneer of perceived perfection. A person does not need to be perfect to be good. Mm. Be still. Be still. That's what he's saying. Be still. Be still. Um, And it's so interesting that you brought up anger there because that's where I was going is because they're an idealist, their common pitfall in is, their judgment and their like um, black and whiteness is they can get frustrated and that frustration type leads to their deadly sin. So if you don't know, the Enneagram has this thing where they every type has a, a, a deadly sin associated with them. Yeah. For the one, it's, it's anger. anger. And, and what's funny about that is that um, Morgan actually says that anger probably doesn't fully represent it, that it's probably more resentment. Yeah, yeah, I do remember him talking about that, that minor shift in the language. 
it could be, but we also see that out of God. Yeah. That oftentimes when we see the recordings of God being angry, it is a bit of resentment. He's he's resentful that his people have acted in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, the one is resentful that people in general act with such depravity or with such lack of care for the mission. Yeah. Um, I think uh, maybe it was, maybe it's Ian that talks about it in the road back to you, or maybe it's um, somewhere else. I was reading about the Enneagram. But you can also, f- you can often find a lot of like CEOs of companies, presidents of companies being type ones because they're so mission driven. Yeah. If they find a mission that they agree with, it consumes them. Yeah. And everything is seen in black and white. Black, anything that disagrees with the mission. White, anything that does agree with the mission. Um, and so because of that, when they see people, and they, they're a high-functioning person, right? So when they're over-functioning, if they see people under-functioning, they get angry. Yeah. They get resentful. Yeah. Why aren't they working as much? And that's where we come back to the... Um, why do I have to do everything myself kind of attitude? Why do I have to do everything myself? If you want something done right, you got to do it gotta yourself. Got to do it yourself. Right. Yep. Um, and that becomes extremely, it can become extremely unhealthy and detrimental. Well, it becomes circular. Yeah. Right? You're working to, as a Christian and a one, you're working, you're doing these things to please God, which is great. That's noble. Mm-hmm. But then when you see people not working to your standards or to your capacity, you resent them, you become angry at them. And so you can see how both sides, the path of integration or the good side or the healthy side and the unhealthy side lead to stillness. When you're over-functioning to do all these things, you need to be still and remember that you're not what you do. Yeah. You are what God made you to be. Yeah. But yet also, in the way God made you, you have a tendency to get angry, to get resentful. And in order to not say some really, really hurtful, detrimental, and destructive things to people, you need to stop. You need to be still. You need to rest. Like yeah. both of these sides, stillness for the one is like it's paramount. Yeah. Ones need, need, need to be still. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. And I think it's a uh that's a really good point. Um and it, it does leave itself in a good place to to talk about the stress and security or uh, integration and disintegration, right? Um, when ones are in stress, they move to the unhealthy side of the four, right? And that's what we were just talking about. And uh, they become more resentful of people. Their their inner critic is is more louder in their head. Yeah. Um, but in security, they take on the healthy side of the sevens, the the enthusiasts, right? The people that are more fun and spontaneous and lighthearted and um but they're still productive people right yeah. um and if if you're unhealthy as a one you end up overworking right like what like we've been talking about i think you can even be a healthy one and function at a higher level than most people but everyone can reach a level of unhealthy functioning yeah i think that's fair um, I think I think that's totally fair, because for me as a six, right, I see the way you work in a healthy state, and I'm like you as a three, yeah, at, at a healthy state, up. and I'm like, uh, no, yeah, <laughs> I need a cocktail. <laughs> like, yeah. You're stressing me out, right? Yeah, it, um, it it's it is strange in the, in that regard, and anyone anyone that functions at that at that level any of the other types that don't function at that level truly just don't understand. Yeah. Um, but I think for the one, 
they function at that level because they have this just like deep, deep desire to leave the world better than they found it. Yeah. And as noble as that is, the sacred Enneagram talks about ones taking a posture, uh, like for prayer, taking a prayer posture of stillness. Yeah. Right. So you can go on prayer walks. You can, you know, there are a lot of different postures you can take as you, as you pray, but one of stillness and I might even add to it comfort, but your, uh, what does he say? Your prayer intention should be rest and specifically you're functioning because you feel like you have to be good because you see the depravity of the world. Yeah. Fine. But rest in the fact that God is the ultimate source of goodness. Yeah. Like no matter what degree or level of which you work for goodness, God is the ultimate source of goodness and you must, you must find rest in the goodness of God. Yeah, it's so funny um, because at the, in the security portion of the road back to you for the ones, um, he says, ones can become entirely different people when they go somewhere for a week of fun in the sun, right? Just taking time to rest to relax, to rejuvenate. Um, yeah. And what Cohen's saying right now is that might need to happen in your prayer life, mm-hmm. right? That, that might need to happen. Um, maybe it needs to happen outside your prayer life as well. Maybe that means taking a vacation. Yeah. Right. But to be healthy, to be a, a, the best you that you can be, if you're a one, that means that you need to sp- probably schedule some you time right yeah. because you're yep. so high functioning that you go 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 do 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 you look at your outlook calendar and it's full and maybe that just means that you need to put a little dot in there for you right maybe it's five minutes maybe it's 10 minutes if you can swing it probably best that you take at least an hour right um I think it's really it's really hard for us to sit here and prescribe the answer for someone. Yeah, we, we can't. We don't know your life. We don't know the demands you've already placed upon yourself that you can't get out of. Yeah. But I think Ian says something um, that's really helpful, both just from a personality type perspective as well as from a spiritual perspective. And that's that healthy ones are committed to a life of service and integrity. They are balanced yeah, and responsible and able to forgive themselves and others for being imperfect. They are principled but patient with the processes that slowly but surely make the world a better place. If you feel that you need to go and go and go and go and people around you, uh, even other high functioning people are telling you like, hey, maybe you need to focus in some other areas. Mm -hmm. You're probably at an unhealthy state. I had a job one time where during the orientation, Um, it was a virtual orientation and, um, the CEO of the company was on this like module video and he said, I want you to think about your life as juggling. Um, you've got multiple balls in the air, you've got work, you've got family, you've got a spiritual life. Maybe you have school and you have family. Four of those five balls are glass. One of them is rubber. The one that's rubber is work. If you're juggling all these balls, you can drop some of them and they will break and you will never be able to put them back together. Mm. The one that you can is the rubber ball. It's your work ball. Mm. 
That's gold. That's good. I was sitting in orientation uh, at this job when he said that, and I was like, oh, my God, this is a sermon illustration somewhere, <laughs> right? Like, Oh, my God. Yeah, that's so good. Because I, <laughs> I do. We can get, especially, you know, as a, as a three, I, I feel this to my core. Like, you can get so caught up in what you do and just go and go and go and go. And I, I use this analogy all the time. Like, I will sit down to work on something and think that I've worked on it for 30 minutes and worked on it for four hours. And, like, I never missed a beat. Yeah. Like, I just worked straight through all distractions. Um, I wrote a 15-page paper the other day in six hours. Wow. Like, just never missed a beat. Um, and it's true. You, ones, threes, and eights can all find themselves where they work, 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 work. And they pick the rubber ball over the glass ones. And so I think if you're a one listening to this and going, man, you guys are reading my mail. It's time. It's time to take a moment of stillness. It's time to find some rest. Um, it's time to remember the God of goodness time to remember a god of love and a god of justice yeah i think for a one that's so key a god of justice yeah ian quotes john steinbeck steinbeck and said when he said and now that you don't have to be perfect you can be good Mm. remember you don't have to be perfect just be good. <laughs>